Hi, I'm Sherry Rogal, and I'm an implementation scientist, and I'm here to make implementation science easy for you. Today, I'm here to tell you about implementation strategies, what they are and why you need them. So let's get started. What even are implementation strategies? Technically, they are activities or actions taken to increase the adoption, implementation, or sustainability of an evidence-based program, intervention, or practice. What you're looking at is the Proctor model of how implementation science works. Implementation strategies are the how of implementation science and the way that you get your evidence-based practice to the places and people who need it to impact change. Incidentally, combinations of implementation strategies are often called bundles or implementation interventions just to confuse you. So what are these elusive activities? Interesting you should ask. Well, technically you didn't, but I imagine that you would if you were here, which you're not. Back in the olden days of implementation science, before 2015, implementation strategies were described as having a Tower of Babel problem. Everyone was walking around using different terms for the same things and similar terms for different things. That was BE, before Eric. Eric is not the name of this guy. This is Byron Powell. But there's not a great acronym that goes with Byron, I don't think. So ERIC is the Expert Recommendations for Implementing Change. This was made when Dr. Powell got a bunch of implementation scientists together and shepherded them through the modified Delphi process to get them to agree on 73 implementation strategies. Since then, others have added and subtracted, but these are the original 73. Because 73 is a big number, another implementation scientist, who is also not named Eric, Tom Waltz, engaged implementation scientists to use concept mapping to group the 73 strategies into what became nine clusters. These include things like financial strategies, infrastructure changes, and stakeholder engagement. So how do we pick between all these things? A lot of folks just pick their favorite strategy. For example, some people really like using apps or think that if we just educate providers, they'll do the right thing. The choice between strategies has been kind of a black box and hardly anyone ever uses empirical methods to choose their strategies. But we think there are better approaches. Here are some examples. Concept mapping, group model building, conjoint analysis, intervention mapping. The problem with these is they all require special methodological skills and some theoretical understanding. They're certainly not easy, but that's why you're here to figure out how to make implementation science easy. Dr. Damschroeder, the queen mother of the Consolidated Framework for Implementation Research, has worked with the ERIC team to develop another approach where you can use a list of implementation barriers to select implementation strategies that implementation experts think will overcome those barriers. Our team is using empiric data gathered from observational studies of implementation efforts across the nation to try to develop a database of implementation strategies and how will they work in what context and for which evidence-based practices. So we're doing some cool math and doing a lot of work on the back end so that hopefully you don't have to. One of the things that we're doing is using configurational comparative methods to try to figure out which combinations of strategies can work well together. So you can think about it like trying to find your way through a circuit and figure out which pathway works the best, which combinations of strategies will work well together. In summary, implementation strategies, we need them, we need tools to find the right ones, and we need to make sure there are no more black boxes. That's all for now, see you soon.